All right, it's 7 o'clock p.m. here on the uh, Pacific Standard Time area. It's 0200, I believe, UTC time. That means it's time for another episode of Friday Night's Dream Encode Live. And this is a beard. It's the beard of the hour. And if you're, if you're interested in growing a beard, I would say it's pretty simple. One part mustache, one part mutton chops, and one part goatee, and it's a whole lot of awesome. And you got yourself a beard. So the first thing I'm actually going to do is uh, we're moving away from the Ustream chat. Uh, because there's a lot of problems with it last episode. So I am now going to go into tutorial mode and tell you how to get to the IRC if you don't have an IRC. Well, we're currently moving the chat to the IRC channel for Dream Encode. So if you go to the Dream Encode page, and you can see all my tabs open because I'm a multitasking master. But uh, you just scroll down here until you see right here in this little column it says join our IRC chat. All you gotta do is click that button and if you're a member you connect with your it'll automatically connect with your username. Uh, it's right here. If you're not a member you'll connect with the uh, title of uh, Dream Encode Head or Dickhead right here. And then that'll just load up the chat and there we all are. So First thing I want to do, the first topic actually that I want to cover, that I felt deserves some uh, some attention because this is a uh, dream encode, is that our very own Skyhawk, the uh, owner of Dream Encode, has had his first baby daughter. So I just want to congratulate him on that and uh, tell tell him well congratulations from all of you. So I thought that was a uh, pretty good news. Now this is episode two. Technically, we are recording. At least, uh, actually, let me double check because you know I'm pretty sure. Yeah, we're recording. We're recording this, so this is technically episode two because we've already done an episode. But I'm going to call this episode 1.1. <laughs> you can consider the previous episode episode beta. So we're we're working through this. Uh, so let's move into what we're talking about today. We actually have. Uh, guest. Uh, we had two guests. We were going to talk about, uh, well, well, let me talk about the topic here. We we're going to talk about administration on Dream and Code. The administrators that we all see, the green, the green little badge that says administrator, and who they are, what they do, what Dream and Code is, kind of behind the scenes, you know, how that's worked with them. Now, I have, uh, I had uh, one guest was going to be number two pencil or Jason. But he hasn't shown up on uh, online yet. He's actually going to a friend's house to uh, to do this. But I do have here uh, a man, an ex Dream and Code uh, administrator, now turned alumni. Uh, he's a Microsoft MVP now, and uh, he's worked with a, a lot of uh, little projects for Microsoft and uh, their uh, their mobile operating system, to be specific. He's done some articles with DZone. He's contributing. He's a contributing author for Coding for Fun on uh, Channel 9 through Microsoft. And I just want to welcome Dennis Delamarski, or Core, as uh, some of you may know him as. Welcome to the show. Oh, thanks for a pretty good introduction there. Yeah. I, well, the funny thing is, uh, Dennis here was the guy, the first uh, host of the Dreaming Co. podcast back when we had the podcast going. And I actually got to be his first guest. Uh, okay. So it's kind of funny that, that he's the first guest of this show. So uh, why don't you tell us about, well, first of all, how long have you been a member of Dreaming Code? Oh, God. Um, I think I joined in 2008. That's when I just started. Actually, like I just discovered, I think I needed some questions with some online content that I was working on. I believe I was just starting work on C Sharp. And Dreaming Code popped up as a pretty good, you know, candidate for an online community. So I decided to join. I believe it was February 2008. I wow. Wrong about, that. about how long uh, how long into that would you say you were actually approached to become a, a Dreaming Home administrator? I believe it was something like a year. Uh, well, oh, a year until I got approached to be a moderator. And I think another year till I became an administrator. Well, maybe less, maybe like four months or so before I became an administrator. That was a uh, was that a uh, uh, was a lot of hard work to get to that point. You know, it it really depends on how you look at it because I would say that a lot of the work that I was doing was something that I really liked 
and enjoy it. And you know, when you like doing something, you don't really pay that much attention to how much time you spend on it. So I was, when I just joined, I started asking questions about the stuff that interested me because again, starting with C sharp, being one of those newbies, I had a lot of, uh, you know, stuff to clarify. Then I actually started answering more questions than I actually asked. So, and I started writing tutorials. And I think that's how I got noticed for a moderator position because I was also started like reporting different posts, introducing mm -hmm. new members, you know, get all the moderator, pre-moderator stuff. You know, every kid wants to be a moderator. So if he goes on the forum and tries to, you know, show that, you know, I'm worthy of your community. Yeah. So that's, yeah. Um, that's, that's how it went. But it, for me, it was more on the programming side. And that's how I got noticed. And, well, if you want a full story, then you probably should reference one of the blog posts. Yeah, I actually will we'll point that out. Actually, uh, it'll, be in the, it'll be in the show, show notes. But, <laughs> uh, yeah, so one day Chris, or Skyhawk, as you mentioned, um, just messaged me about it and said, hey, by the way, how about you IM me? So I got on Facebook and talked to Chris, and Chris was, how do you like the bed color? Blue, right? And we know the blue color from Jimmy Code is moderator. Yeah. So that's, and I was like, wow, cool. Now I'm moderator. You know that excitement when you know, like, wow, I'm the boss now. Uh, it's not really that, you know, boss like, but it was still cool. So that's how I started as a moderator. And then, you know, a couple of months later, when we worked on, worked on a team, we worked on some projects, we collaborated on some content. Chris told me that, you know, with all the stuff that I work on, I might be just be an administrator. So that's, that was a pretty smooth transition there. Okay. So uh, what would you say is the, uh, one of your earliest memories about Dreaming Code specifically? Um, how about I just say Super Slaw? <laughs> That's one memory that kind of stuck with me for some reason because whenever he was the face of the community for some weird reason. Yeah, everybody who, who's been around Dreaming Code for any extended amount of time knows who Super Sloth is. <laughs> but it's just, you know, it's just that kind of a personality that you probably can only find in one place. I don't know if other forums have it or not, but, you know, it will it yeah. was really, really memorable. Then again, uh, talking about other memorable stuff that was happening, I would definitely say that it was the contest. And I remember before I joined the community, I was actually a lot of browsing, you know, just going through forum threads, reading mm -hmm. stuff. And there was a contest that Dreaming Code was running that it was a photo contest, I believe. It was Dreaming Code's 250,000 members, I believe, when they hit that number, they ran a contest where members had to submit pictures of them and Dreaming Code in the picture. And I believe I was one of the people who submitted something. I don't remember too well. I believe I did. And I had a one of the throwaway accounts. Ah. Maybe. Yeah. So that that was one hour. I didn't win anything, but that's how, you know, I kind of felt the spirit of the community and I, I would say that was one of the things that actually got me more attracted to Dreaming Code at that point. So the uh, so the uh, the contests are, are a big uh, attractive part. I've noticed that they've been trying to pick up challenges for specific uh, specific forms now. Like you got the Ruby challenges, you got the uh, the game development um, challenges and stuff. You know, I don't want to be rude, but the content was not exactly something that attracted me. But the content that was there at that point, I would say the people, because the sense of somewhat of a family. It's on Dreaming Code. It always was there. Yeah. You know, that kind of help each other out. And once you establish yourself as a pretty good member, you have more people actually trying to help you because, well, I mean, they know you to some extent. And yeah. As you, you know, you don't really know anybody in the community. Yeah, the, uh, I've noticed that the, uh, the community behind German Code is very special compared to some uh, some other forums. and uh, it, it is very unique. Yeah. yeah it, it has its ups and downs, but it, it is definitely very unique. Okay. Well, one question I have to ask that's, uh, I should have I should have started with this question was about the reference to the uh, the dungeon, you know, because that's a popular uh, comment when they're talking about administrators and stuff like that. The dungeon that he keeps you in, right? Yeah, right. it's a huge dungeon. <laughs> How did you escape? 
<laughs> there are dungeons everywhere, I'm just saying. There might be <laughs> right underneath your basement. <laughs> you'll never know. So I noticed that uh, you, you actually stopped being an administrator. You, you went on to other things. So uh, tell me what was the, uh, the kind of point in which you decided it was time for you to step down as administrator and move on? Well, the primary reason was the fact that I got so many projects at school and outside of school that were targeting my career. So I, I, at one point I decided, you know, there are priorities, right? Everybody has their priorities. For somebody, yeah. it's moderating an online community, and I don't have anything against that. I loved it. Did it take a lot of time? A lot yeah, of your time? It's a lot of time. Oh, uh, going back to the point where people think that you know, oh, moderator, there's a cool title, you get a cool badge, and you were that, you know, I'm somebody on an online community. I'm important on the internet. It is not um, all that shiny and fluffy. The moderator position. There's a lot of work involved behind it. You actually have to deal with a lot of spam, user disputes, threats, and trust me, that's one of pretty bad things to handle. Yeah. And, you know, when it all comes together, you find out that in one day you spend two, three, four hours on the forums just cleaning it up, you know, uh, organizing stuff, moving stuff, handling reports, talking to users. So it takes a lot of time. And that time, I, I just didn't have it at one point, you know, and I just thought that it is time to focus primarily on school and my career. Yeah. And I, I, I mean, I'm still getting on Dreaming Code from time to time to see what's up, you know, see what's going on and be up to the current events. I'm just not involved in the administration of it. Yeah. Do you ever miss that? Um, to some extent, yes, definitely. I would say I definitely miss the team room. The you know the specific private forum that we had for the administrators and from the, for the team that we talked about ideas discussions and whatnot was going on. Um, it, it was definitely an exceptional experience. I loved it. It's just you know at one point you just got to reorganize your priorities and that was that was it. But uh, I do not uh, cut out the possibility sometime in the future of coming back. Maybe when I have more free time, you know. Yeah, I I, I know you're really busy lately. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Well, be, between school and free career choices, it's it is really a lot of my time is yeah. spread around. You know, my my schedule is pretty tight in that context. Yeah, I was uh I was lucky enough to 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 meet and talk with you, uh, but in the past before when you were administrator of German Code, so I've had the opportunity to actually see you move on past that and branch out into all these other areas. You want to talk about those areas that you've been involved in at all? What specific areas are you talking about? Well, as you, as you in your own personal projects and things you've been working on and uh, how how you came across becoming a Microsoft MVP. <laughs> uh, all right, well, it all started when Microsoft had a program called the Microsoft Student Insiders. Uh, I believe this program started like two years ago. Yeah. In 2000, actually, three years ago, it was 2009. So, Chris Kenworthy, Skyhawk, got me involved. In, he actually recommended me for this program and uh, talked to the person responsible for it. It was uh, Hillary Pike. And if Hillary listens to it, hi, Hillary. Hi, Chris, if you listen to it. But, yeah. So, uh, Chris talked to Hillary and recommended me. I went through an interview and I became a Microsoft Student Insider. And uh, basically what this program is, where Microsoft has a number of students in the United States that work with Microsoft technology, that try to publish content related to that technology. Microsoft uh, periodically sends us to different like, developer events to cover some, you know, developer happenings, if yeah. you call it that. So, that's how I got involved in this program. It was because of Dreaming Code, because of what I worked in Dreaming Code. And, uh, you know, I, I got noticed. I got picked up in that way. Uh, that's when, that's after that time, I managed to meet some people at Microsoft. They got me involved in more activities closer to Microsoft. And that led me, you know, to some more opportunities. And on the side, I was working on different projects like, you know, Connect related Windows Phone. Windows Phone is something I'm really passionate about. 
I, I love the mobile platform actually. I think it has a really huge, huge future yeah. in front of it. It needs uh, developer effort. Yeah, that's a lot of your but, projects will, uh, revolve around the, the Windows phone. Oh, absolutely, yeah. If you see, I would say 90% of my products are currently focused on Windows phone. But yeah, so, uh, and then last year, you know, with all the, my publications on Windows Phone or all my projects, I got noticed by the MVP program and I got nominated. Yeah. For an MVP, so I got a nomination in July, uh, for July, uh, sometime in March. Um, I got a nomination, you know, hey, we're nominated for our MVP, send us a report of, you know, what are you working on? So I sent that report, and in July I got a notification, and and the award in the mail said, "Hey, you're Microsoft MVP in Windows Phone." That's that's how it went, and I'm I just, currently I'm still working. You know, it's the MVP is not is not a stop to the efforts. Like, oh, hey, you know, I reached this point, I'm good. No, you know, I'm I, I really like working with leading edge of technology, so I'm still moving towards more and more and more as much as I can get out of it. Yeah. So do you uh do you want to talk about some of the uh, the projects that you've been working with at all? Well, look, I found you on a uh, on the your MVP profile here on Microsoft's website. On the online website? Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, you got uh, quite a bit of expertise sure. and interest. Yeah, that is you know my my focus is pretty broad when it comes to Microsoft technologies. Um, lately. Yeah. Trying, you know, just, you branch out a little bit and see what's Windows 8 about, you know, WinRT, that kind of, that kind of stuff. But yeah, uh, talking about the projects, let's... Um, what about the Zoom Data Viewer? The Zoom Data Viewer. I love this project, and actually that's how I started working with coding for fun. Um, so the Zoom Data Viewer, uh, you, you know what the Zoom client is, right? Yeah. It's a iPod kind of device, a music device? Um, well, the Zune player was a hardware device. It was the Microsoft's implementation of the iPod. But I'm talking about the Zune player as the Zune software client on a desktop that is used to sync between uh, Zune, the hardware, and Zune, the software. Like Zune, the, the, the computer. The, the desktop application? Uh, yeah, yeah. So basically, now you have the Windows Phone thing, but that's uh, that's another story. So this Zoom client it has some sort of a gamer card system. So if you played Xbox, you know that you have a gamer card where you keep your achievements, right? You have gamer points, and you know it shows what games you play and whatnot. Yeah. Zoom has this. Well, let's call it the Zoom card, where it shows how many plays you have, as in how many songs you played. It shows you what artists have you played, what badges you have for artists, as in, you know, played an album 250 times, you get a badge. You played a specific artist 250 times, you get a badge. It's that kind of stuff. So I was curious at one point as to how can I get that data in my own application? Because I don't want to launch Zune every single time to see how many plays I have, how many, you know, what badges I earn. And I said, well, I like Windows Phone. How about I build a Windows Phone application that does that? So what I did is I was thinking about how can I, how can I get the data? And that's how I started sniffing network traffic. Uh, start toying with that sort of stuff? What? Start messing deeper with the, uh, the, the concepts and stuff? Right. I was wondering, well, if this application gets the data from somewhere, can I get the same data from that place too? So I installed Wireshark, I installed Fiddler, and I started running them and see, you know, the endpoints. Start snooping I, around. <laughs> yeah, like, hey, Zuna has actually many endpoints that are open. You know, you would think that some of the, um, some of the data is obviously secured, like, the authentication, right? When you log in with Zoom, it all goes through SSL layers. So uh, that that was out of my uh, reach at that point. But the the point, the endpoints that actually showed the interaction with the Zoom card were open. It was plain XML data, and I was like, "Wow, this is cool!" So I documented it. 
I documented the, the endpoints and I saw what was going on and I built a Windows Phone application on top of that. So I managed to build a, a Zoom data viewer on Windows Phone. I think there's an application place that's kind of competing with what I do in this context. But my project is all open source. It's zoomdata.cogplex.com. You know, free to download. It's a Windows Phone application, and it can easily be used in um, any other .NET project because the code is pretty much self-explanatory. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. Uh, the address to that, if anybody's interested, is zoomdata.codeplex.com. I can put that in the... We'll, we'll pull a post where we link to the uh, show notes and everything like that with all these URLs. Uh, the, the next project I wanted to talk to you about was uh, Connect Contrib. That seems very interesting. So Connect, connect Contrib, yeah. Uh, connect Contrib is a concept that I started once the Connect SDK was released in public. Basically what it is, or let's say what I plan it to be because it's still a work in progress, is for it to be a set of extensions on top of the Connect SDK that allows people to develop richer applications easier. So currently what it is, is it provides a set of templates for Visual Studio 2010 that allow you to easily create fundamental applications where your basic structures are created for you. So let's say you want to track uh, the skeleton. If, you're in, if you know the basics of Connect, you know there's the, the skeleton tracking, yeah. or the depth tracking, yeah. So this, let's say you want to track the skeleton. So what you do is you would have to write that skeleton tracking code that is going to be the same for every single skeleton tracking application. That's the foundation. So yeah. what I did, I used that code and I created a Visual Studio template that would make it easier. So you click on a new project in Visual Studio, select connect, template, open a template, and that is it. The code is there. And that is, I mean, it, sim it simplifies the process so much that, you know, you can start with Connect development right away. And that's, actually, I think Connect Contrib right now is one of, the, one of my most popular projects that I have by business and downloads. And uh, recently, yeah, shameless plug, uh, the Connect Contrib templates are now available to NuGet. If you know nice. what NuGet is. Yeah, so... Well, I have to uh, to add on to that. You know, some people may not be aware exactly what Connect is. I mean, it's kind of it, it's pretty much like Microsoft's thing that attaches to the. Uh, well, is it is it just the Xbox, or is it allowed for computer use as well? I mean, not the Xbox. Yeah, the Xbox, right? Mm -hmm. So, it, it, and it's a text movement. It's kind of like you are the controller. What's their whole saying behind it? Um. So again, what, what's the question on it? Well, I want to I want to actually def, like describe what exactly Connect is. You know, oh, for the people that may not be aware. Sure. Well, what Connect is is a hardware device that you can use with your Xbox or your computer that captures audio, depth data, video data, and skeletal data. So what it basically it allows for the person in front of this hardware device to interact with the device that Connect is plugged in. So let's say if it's plugged into the Xbox, which was the primary purpose for it. Plugged into the Xbox, you can use gestures, hand gestures, general body movement to control uh, parts of the console or a specific game. And there are plenty of Kinect games at this point, so that's not something you can, you know, not find in your local Walmart. But um, it features voice control. If plugged into the Xbox on a PC, you have to handle that on your own. So, it, it is basically a device that eliminates the need for a controller uh, when it comes to Xbox and eliminates the need for specific hardware interaction devices like the mouse or the uh, keyboard on a computer with the proper uh, man in the middle layer, if you want to call it that way. So, on the Xbox, I can be saying something like Xbox, Netflix, and it will launch Netflix. Then I can wave my hand and browse through the queue on Netflix. So I, I don't need the controller because <laughs> what you mentioned, I am the controller that it really is. I am the controller. And I don't need any additional hardware by me to use Connect with the Xbox. It's great technology. 
Right. On the computer, you'll have to, you know, you, you might program something, create an application. There are plenty of uh, third-party applications right now that are copying, like, sort of like the minority, minority report implementations. That is something something definitely worth looking at. And, I mean, if you plan to develop for Connect on PC, there's the Connect SDK for Windows that is public now. Ah. So that's uh, that's Connect Contrib at uh, or dot codeplex.com. And then connectcontrib.codeplex.com. And for those of you guys who are GitHub fans, there's also Connect Contrib on GitHub. Oh, nice. We'll see you all for that. Oh, we'll put that. We'll, I'll get it from you later. We'll add it to the uh, the notes and everything. Because I wanted to move on and talk about this uh, this third project uh, that uh, you have here. That's the Visual Studio Achievements for the Windows Phone. That's so. That's the achievement systems always do great. Yeah. So the Visual Studio Achievements is a separate project that I'm not directly involved in. It's a project led by. Uh, Karsten Januszewski from Channel 9. Yeah. And so basically what it is, is as you work on your Visual Studio projects, let's say you write an application, a C-sharp application, and you met as by specific criteria. Say write a piece of code that uses 300 fields. It detects it and considers it as an achievements earned. So you, you can get achievements while you program. Yeah, you get achievements for what you already do. That's pretty. It, it's it seems like fun, pointless fun. At this, you know, if that makes sense. It, 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 well, yeah, it is one of those you know just for fun uh, projects that doesn't have any you know significant backing as and when it comes to actually like uh, from the functional perspective. I mean, you probably. Had, well, at least at this point, one be having an interview and be like, hey, how many Visual Studio achievements do you have, you know, when applying for a job? <laughs> that would be a, that would be a, an interesting day when, when I get asked how many achievement points I have for a job interview. Yeah. So, but uh, some of those for fun concepts, you know, people were asking, and there was a blog post a long time ago that said, hey, what if Visual Studio had achievements? And I think up to a point where, you know, hey, here's achievements. You asked for it. We got them. So it's, it's an interesting project. So Visual Studio Achievements for Windows Phone basically is just an aggregator for those achievements from the Channel 9 services that just gets, gets the achievements and allows you to compare yourself to other people that are already registered for, you know, basic stuff. It's an achievement viewer, if you want to call it that way. Nice. It's not exactly special. That's an easy URL. That's just vsa.coplex.com. Right. For Video Studio achievements. If you use uh, if you use Video Studio to do your development, uh, you should probably check this out. You know, get little achievement uh, points as you uh, program. I mean, it's 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 not gonna it's like like a court or Dennis here said. It's not gonna be the difference between being hired or not in a in a, in a job, but it certainly is a, a fun thing to to have going on. Yeah. It's, again, something, I mean, if you want to link it, I'll give you the link so you can put it in your show notes where you can yeah. actually download the plugin and have fun with it. So uh, so those are your, your three good projects. It's definitely uh, interesting to see the stuff that you've done. What I want to do now is, uh, I'm in, I'm in the, the live chat right now, the IRC channel. For those that may have just been joining us, we've switched channel our, our chat channel from Ustream to the Dreaming Code IRC channel on FNET. Uh, the channel is the pound symbol, the number symbol, Dreaming Code. And you can access it actually through the Dreaming Code page. Let me actually show this again. So you go to the Dreaming Code, and all you got to do is you got to scroll down here in the center. Right here where it says Join Our RC Channel, just click that and go to Connect, and you'll be in the uh, the chat for it. Because so, what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to open it up to some of the some questions from the the, the the viewers here, which a lot of them are actually Dreaming Code members. I, I don't see any uh, anonymous people on the channel, which would be titled as a, a Dickhead1, which is abbreviated for Dreaming Code. I'd like to uh, to point that out. <laughs> we, don't, we don't consider them, them uh, derogatory words. We, we actually look at it as a very uh, amusing thing. You know, you know, you just go with it when, you're, when your abbreviation ends, ends up like that, right? <laughs> so... 
Uh, let's see. Is there any questions other than uh, the awesomeness of my beard? <laughs> Anybody have? What? You in forever. Yeah, we we haven't. Uh, we, you've been really busy. Uh, I've been busy. I've started up uh, classes and stuff. Uh, so it, it's uh, it's been a. How long has it been since you've talked to some of the other members in Dreamy Code? Do you try to keep in, in touch with some of them? How about we shoot for a year? A year? Wow. Yeah, I was reading your, your posts on your on your site about your uh, reflections back on uh, Dream and Code administration. And uh, you mentioned that it's been about a year since you were uh, you were involved with that. Yeah. That, I mean, that, that post pretty much generalizes what we talked about on the admin yeah. side of the things. But certainly interesting. You're, you're, you're kind of like one of those... Uh, the success stories that other people from Dream Code could look at and see that you know this guy <laughs> came to Dream Code, didn't know much about programming, you know, worked with it, asked a lot of questions, started answering those questions instead of asking them, moved up in that, and then kind of just moved on from there. <laughs> well, um, I mean, I, I I think if that is true, it's <laughs> man, use me as motivation, you know. Yeah, uh, yeah, Neo Neo Tifa are. Uh, Neo Tiffa from the forums is, is asking if you can get her a job. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, not at this point. I'm See, not a person to get yeah. people jobs. De Dennis here is a, is a student, and he's uh, I believe you're applying for some internships. Yes, I'm a student and applying for internships, so don't expect me to be the person who's going to employ you. Yeah, what you got to think about is this... I've actually been contacted uh, through email by, by someone recently about a, about a job prospects and stuff, which and it, basically what it is is that you need to, I think uh, Core would agree, is that you need to actually just get involved, you know, start programming, put your stuff out there, help out with other projects, and people will start to, to notice that. Right, right. They, they found me through LinkedIn, you know, because I post all the skills I have on LinkedIn, all the stuff I've worked with and everything. That's how they, they, they came across me. And believe it or not, LinkedIn is a pretty decent tool when it comes to networking for professionals because I did not think that it, it had that much of an impact, but I figured this year that it actually does. So it's definitely worth looking into if you plan on getting employed. Definitely. That is, that is in the tech field. I don't know how well it works for fields outside technology. Yeah, you'd be uh, people would be surprised how much that the uh, when they apply for jobs that a lot of people actually Google your name. Right. I don't know how many executives in textile are gonna are gonna look on LinkedIn, but you know. Yeah, LinkedIn's a very popular site. So if you you and you know you don't just you know put on all the stuff you're used to dealing with, and I believe the cat is gonna decide to walk in. Yep, there she goes. There she goes. She's walking right in front of me. <laughs> this cat. So so she she chills out over here next to next to me. She's where she sleeps. And instead of jumping down from here, where there's a clear opening right here where she could jump down to her food dish and everything, she likes to jump on my desk, walk right across me between me and the uh, the computer, and then jump down and then walk around me. So that just gives you an idea of, of, of how cats work. <laughs> so, anyways, whoa! <laughs> so your uh, your phone or something? No, it would not be the phone. It'd be you. Stream that decided to show ads in the middle of. The oh yeah, podcast. they show ads every every half hour or so I believe. So maybe I should uh shell out on the premium account. I sh I should talk to talk to uh, our producer, which reminds me to talk about that. The uh this show uh I'm actually bound by contract. No, there's no actual contract. <laughs> Number two pencil from the forums uh bought the webcam and everything, which makes this show possible and it's really helped me out. He's actually working with me with, with the software and that sort of stuff. So we can thank him for all that stuff. He's actually was supposed to be a guest because this was supposed to last an hour. We've barely been going uh, uh, 36 minutes with this. Because uh, he was going to come on. We were going to talk, of, talk with him about current administration since, since he's a current administrator. But he is still not on Skype. Uh, so I'll just talk about him. He actually uh, owns his uh, a business computer design and repair in... Uh, Kuyo Hook, I have no idea. I'm going to put you the crap out of it. Hold on, hold on. Uh, would you mind sending me the name? Maybe I could tell it. All right, I'll copy and uh, paste it into uh, the, the chat with you. Yeah, it's like Kuyo Hook Falls. This falls out. Yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah, in Ohio. It's where his business is at. Uh, he does a lot of computer repair. In fact, if somewhere along here, he's got a service list. Oh. 
well, yeah, he, uh, right here, computer repair, laptop repair, and everything like that. And he also is responsible for setting us up with a YouTube channel where these videos are going to be uploaded to afterwards. Uh, so for those that couldn't make it, we're actually recording this episode, unlike last episode. We're actually recording this. We're using Ustream itself to record it on their end, since apparently recording and streaming don't like to work well together on my computer. It, it hogs up too much resources that my computer just can't can't handle. So they're being recorded. We're going to upload to the YouTube channel, which will be youtube.com slash weekly dick. Weekly D-I-C. Yeah, number, number two pencil. Mr. Pencil set that up. Uh, so I'm going to link that to you in the notes. Uh, it'll be on the YouTube page itself, which would be kind of pointless if you're on the YouTube page to link you to the YouTube page. But I'm going to do it anyways. <laughs> And I'd like to thank I'd like to thank Core here for being with us today because uh, it's always good to have a guest to talk with instead of just you know talking around the channel and not not really you know sometimes I have a tendency to talk fast and blow right past the uh, topics so it's good to have that that have you here too to where we can have a little discussion anything anything last time I'm not getting any good questions from the chat I've been looking at it every now and then and a lot of them are just you know talking about a uh, Neo Tifa and her. Uh, People really problem. do appreciate the naming conventions for the show. Yeah, it's kind of hard. I mean, you, we're limited in what we're able to work with, with Dream Code. I call it Dream Code Live or Dream TV, but it's naturally abbreviated down at DIC, so it's kind of hard to work to, to avoid that kind of an innuendo. <laughs> yeah, people are talking in the chat about the YouTube channel name. It's, it, it's difficult. Uh, with the yeah be, being a forum admin pretty much gets you a lot of those questions yeah Is that so what type of questions are you, do, do you do you remember getting as an admin a lot any any good questions that you can remember other than the uh, the dream and code name itself uh, let's see if they have any um, what did you uh, uh here is a question for you that i uh about the forums themselves going back to the forums and administration and everything like that can, can you tell me of anything specifically about the Dream & Code forums that you might have not liked or might have uh, or might have liked, you know, depending on which one comes to your mind? But <laughs> I know Dream um, & Code has, has some things that, that uh, some people find annoying. But uh, Sure. Well, the thing that I like about Dream & Code is definitely, I would say, I already said it's going to be the feeling of familiarity for yeah. everybody knows everybody. Yeah, the community. It's, the community is really supportive. And what I don't like, hmm. um, I look in, in chat. They're saying super soft. <laughs> no, 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 no. I don't. I don't know if they're saying they don't like it or they like it. They just said super sloth. Super sloth was actually is a part of the community that makes this community kind of unique. It is. It, he really is. Watching watching super sloth on Twitter is like ESPN gone wrong on Twitter. So. <laughs> Um, yeah, uh, super size is out of the question on this topic. What I didn't like, I, I don't really know on top of my head right now what's something that I didn't like, uh, I had a problem with. I would say probably something that I didn't really enjoy as much was the fact that when, you know, new people come in and they try to police tra threads when they're, uh, you know... You mean uh, back when uh, they, they had a lot of... Uh... A lot of times that two days in the community and, and tried to, you know, tell people what to do, and we had to deal a lot with that. I've been guilty of that. I was guilty of that. I came on yeah. the forum and not too after long. I was like just like reciting the rules. <laughs> you know, what guys like, yes, yeah, slow down a little bit with that. We, we are the moderating team. We can handle it. You know, at one point it just got to the point where we were like, how about we just, you know, if we see people doing that, we just put a temporary ban on that because it got to the point where so many people were doing it and it was the the whole if you remember the rule stack it was abused so much that we had to remove it yeah nobody really read the rule stuff anyways because you still see people making posts about that they completely just ignore the rules <laughs> oh it's gonna be in every community it doesn't matter where you go it's gonna be everywhere i think especially since they open up the when they open up the uh, the ability for anyone to post anonymously without an account uh, I think that really added to the the people just posting uh, questions without really reading through the rules, even though they're right there in front of them. Even though, <laughs> see, like people in the IRC, you know, bring up memories. There's Computer Fox. This Neo Tifa brings up Computer Fox. Uh, ah, so long ago. 
I, I don't know. I don't know, Andre, if you were there when the whole computer fox thing happened. Uh, I see that it, this. What I might have been a member, but I might have been paying attention. It's, you know, the forums are so large, you can completely not pay, uh, realize what's going on. Use the forum search. You, you'll you'll find it. You'll find it pretty quick, actually. Computer Fox. Yeah. Computer Fox. I, I believe they didn't change. Yeah. I yeah, I don't think they changed the name. Let's look it up. So, what what was the story behind I, this? I, I don't think there's a need to read it on the show. Oh no, I'm not going to read. it. I'm just looking it up. <laughs> right. So what, what what's this? You don't want to talk about the story? Is that too is it too traumatizing? No, I don't. You know, it's just you know, it's an off topic discussion. And yeah, that was completely on topic because we're talking about the forums and that's what the show's about, <laughs> good or bad, right? Uh, I I actually uh, last episode I, I pointed out one topic that I found very very amusing. I was unable to find a good one for this this show. That uh, that was uh, I mean, there's a couple of good posts of, uh, that are pretty funny and uh, amusing or fail posts, but you know, they're they're just like the usual stuff, just the usual stuff. Every now and then, there's something really good. I mean, uh, we got a uh, uh, Miss uh, Neo Tiffa's post here that's reached 136 replies. That's pretty impressive. And by the way, look, I think uh, Jason's online. Is he? Is he? Because that would be great if we. Ah, oh, yes, he's trying to call me. I am going to decline him and then add him. Oh, you could probably hear that. My, it's so sad that I... Oh, I should switch over to my my face as I try to figure out what to do here. Let's see. Call him. Oh, no. I want to add him. How do I add him to my... You, you got a request here from people to end the show with a joke you can tell your kid. That's going to be difficult. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there we go. I'm going to add him over. Yep. Jason's on. Mr. Pencil, a little late, are we? Good evening. <laughs> uh, what? How's the time zone work? Yeah. <laughs> it's it's what? <laughs> I was I was uh, even Mexican, so it's like I was down south. Does that help? <laughs> yeah. So we got we got number two pencil, as you know him on the forum, uh, or known as uh, his, his run name Jason. We were, we were talking about you earlier. We we're talking about how you how you didn't seem to be able to make it, but you know you've you've made it here. We were, we were just I'm getting. Off. Yeah. I'm gonna actually see about getting a a better mic hooked up. So give me two minutes, and I'll be right back. All right, we're gonna give him two minutes. We still got core here. We can talk with. <laughs> right. So let's, uh, let's see. Uh, I am going to start making up questions here since the uh, forums don't have anything good in here. How did you? Here, how did you find Dreaming Code? That's for you because he he closed the conversation. He went to go get a different mic. But I was like, how did you actually find Dreaming Code? How did you come across it with just a random Google search? I believe I was searching for something. <laughs> let, let me try and recall. I I believe it was connected to reading streams in C sharp, and somebody had a pretty good explanation on Dreaming Code, and that's where I saw the tutorial, and then I decided to join. So what were you looking up when you found it? Do you remember? Oh, it's been so long ago, community-wise long. I mean, two years not that long ago, if you think about it. Well, four years. Yeah. Uh, community-wise, it happened. So much stuff happened. I don't even know, you know. it's. I, I see I'm actually, it's an old post from that you started talking about a uh, Dream Code expert Q&A. I believe they have that every now and then. We just ask some questions. Yeah, and I believe actually it started pretty well. It just, again, it was a question of time, and we got even such people as Tim Pure from Microsoft, who was the uh, program manager for Silverlight, actually answer some community questions. It was actually pretty cool. I, I was really excited about doing that interview. Jason, are you there? And he's busy. <laughs> uh, so, uh, let me let me ask you, Core. Uh, what what are there anything that you remember from Dream Accord that you tried to head off that like uh, that you can say that that was partly you were responsible for that? Something you took charge of and tried to make happen on the forums? Something I do charge <laughs> of and I knew I know you were on the podcast. That was one. Right. So basically, you were asking for what I did significant in the community that's still running on it. Whoa! What are you doing there? Oh, sorry. Noise. Two seconds. <laughs> it's like he's eating Snickers or something over there, or like wafers. Just <laughs> um. 
But um, <laughs> yeah, to, to answer your question is, I noticed, uh, if you go on the Dreaming Code homepage, yeah, and you see that sidebar. Well, not exactly the sidebar. That tiny square that says Dreaming Code Video Channel. Yeah, that was my idea, and I started that. Nice. Also, if you go in the forums and you scroll all the way down, I can hear you scrolling way all over there. <laughs> it's like right. It just traveled a mile. <laughs> uh, trying to find it. Oh, it actually might not be there anymore. Interesting. One thing I did uh, notice, though, uh, just to bring this up, is that a lot of channels. Uh, not channels, but uh, forums have the uh, the roll call options, and it, it, some of them look like you started a lot of them. Uh, right. When we started roll calling and seeing how many developers we can get out of each forum, and you know, list yourself and tell us what you do, uh, that actually hit it off pretty well. Um, roll calls, resource threads. Let me find. I think in game development, it 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 still might be pinned. It still might ah. be there. I got oh, yes, it, it's called Game Development Tools and Resources. That thread has 45,500 views right now. It's the most popular pinned thread in the game development forum. Game development is a popular topic. Right. And I'm actually surprised that it's still alive and kicking because it's, it has, I mean, it has a pretty good resource on it. It's just... You probably got some people editing it. They have, a, I mean, we got the forum layers are probably working on it. I mean, it's Stay Crisp was the last person to edit it. Yep. Yep. February twenty first. I got a I got a question here actually from the uh, the uh, live chat for you guys. Both of you. Uh, what's okay? Actually, this is directed at Core. So never mind what I just said. Never mind. <laughs> it's directed at Core. What is your opinion? I guess it could go for both of you. What's your opinion on drumming up more hardware support and sub forums? This is from. Uh, what the? Uh, what are you doing over there? I'm trying to break out of the basement. <laughs> Jason's gonna stay in the basement. I think I found a loose board. Yeah, uh, this goes to both of you. It's from Madi one two three underscore one. Uh, oh, I, I think the whole hardware support is more up uh, Jason's alley. But for my personal opinion, I think we got a pretty good community list right now in computer support. Yeah. So I, I don't, I don't drumming up support. As in, what exactly do you mean by dropping off support? Advertising it more, highlighting it to people. You know, the the thing about it is that there are plenty of forums and online communities that focus on hardware. You know, yeah. we Dreaming Dreaming Code is not a community that focuses on hardware support. So I'm not sure how well that will work out because why why have a developer community split into a whole new you know hardware support? There's you know I I, I strongly believe that online communities should be separated by specific, you know, um, should be specific areas. So if it's a programming community, it should be a programming community. It might have stuff on the side, like Jimmy Code. And, you know, we we have the Caffeine Lounge. There is the yeah. Corner Cubicle. There is the Job Board, right? So it's all this stuff, but it's primarily, it's a programming community. It's a developer community. So... I personally don't think that it would need any additional um, support for the hard hardware forms. All right. Again, personal opinion. I'm not uh, part of the admin team right now, so it's. <laughs> well, what do you it's... what do you think, uh, uh, Mr. Pencil? What do you think about the adding that hardware? Was something that was actually something Chris approached me about when I was early on in the site before I was on the team was he wanted it kind of redesigned or reorganized because the current organization was, it, it was all conglomerated into one subtopic or subforum. So that's one of the recent changes that we pushed was trying to subcategorize between hardware support and software support and then within the hardware and software, the specific Linux and Windows and um, laptop and, and desktop. One of the... Um, sort of the opposite of what Den was saying in, in that we are all software is that's one thing he really wants to attack is some of the other hardware support websites that, you know, let's try and get a market up on them as well. Let's, let's try to, we've got a lot of members, kind of interrupt myself, but we've got a lot of members uh, that are spanning across more areas uh, than we've ever had before with Dream & Code growing in, in leaps and bounds like it has been. So 
why not have another support forum since we've got a lot of people that are you know experts in that field as well yeah that makes sense it's good to, i mean it's interesting to hear some of the behind i mean some members have probably been asking about it and, you know I, I know a lot of people feel like that sometimes they don't get responses but the, the people are listening and uh taking actions on such things the other half of his question i actually have to scroll up to read the other half of the question from modi as uh, i've been corrected uh what about uh, more sub forms? I think it kind of attacks the same pro uh, same question because I noticed they've been adding some sub forms. One of them recently, they added the nightmare code recently, which is a very interesting thing. They actually, oh, they had a competition or something that they were talking about starting with it. Wait, are we talking about? Have you ever seen a poster job thread where you get a percentage of the future profit? Oh yeah, I was looking at that earlier, and I was talking about the. Uh, I haven't talked about that, but I was talking about. I noticed that too. The job board it says need a job. See all job listings. On the forums, that's another thing that, that's been added. So, wh what is what are those type of things going on uh, with? Uh, I'll talk to us, uh, number two pencil about this, Jason. Since you're a current admin, is that is that something that they're trying to uh, ramp up, putting out more more sub forums like that? Yeah, uh, uh, kind of the same the same answer applies in that with the amount of members that we have, um, we start getting. I mean, it, more more requests for specific languages you know before when you'd have like one person like well gosh there's no assembly forum this sucks and leaves it's different when you've got 20 people saying the same thing or or they're post you, you find more often um and i think it's the java one that has a lot of different forums uh you find that, yeah it's java but you get a lot of people asking about this specific technology and then you get an expert in that field why not branch it off yeah yeah, especially when you're getting, like you said, getting crowded, it's like specific towards uh, something that, uh, a specific, maybe like a niche chat, like a Ruby, I'm not saying that this is that you need it, but Ruby has a, also a web development portion to it, and then there's the desktop part. So that kind of thing, if there's enough attention to, to kind of split off, do you guys often consider maybe doing that? I'm sorry, I was reading in the IRC chat. <laughs> Awkward silence. <laughs> <laughs> well, see, now number two pencil other than me is not a good multitasker <laughs> i'm getting old shut up <laughs> now i was asking about is that is that is, all, is that what uh, a lot of thing that goes into consideration when there's a lot of uh, attention towards a certain aspect of something like I, i've used ruby as an example how it's got web development part of, to it is that going into consideration if there's enough of a of a desire for that specific thing that they may create a sub form within that well yeah sure I'm not saying that that needs to be done. I'm just saying that you know, using that as an example, <laughs> Ruby Ruby's yeah. a, little, a little interesting with, with the thing because it all kind of goes together. Uh, Python also has got a, a web development part to it that with through a lot of different frameworks. Yeah, I think I think initially when I joined the site, we had Perl and Python kind of conglomerated together because they were the two weird scripting languages that no one uses, and then. Python has really just taken off. Yeah. And so we're like, why on earth are these joined together? Oh, because no one used them. So, <laughs> so now there's no reason to keep them together anymore. And yeah, they were split. I know there's a lot of good, a lot of topics covering a lot of languages on, uh, on Dream and Code. And then you got the one that's like, other languages, <laughs> things that don't fit in the general consensus. Every, is actual there's language. There's always someone new that posts assembly in the other languages i mean that's one of the big ones i find i'm moving a lot that's one thing i found interesting that assembly is not on there fortran is not on there it's a popular language would you believe that we we have an assembly sub forum <laughs> do you i don't yes. i don't look up assembly stuff because i never coded the thing i'm sure some people actually love assembly and would, would just love the fact that there's a forum it's probably yeah, just the, um the, the gunner i'm kind of going blank here my Belly's full of train or uh, Mexican. Uh, I want to pronounce it Gunner, Gunner, Inc. Gunner Incorporated, Gunner Incoming. <laughs> Not been on the site, but for I mean, maybe it's a little longer than I'm remembering, but it's been a few months, and he's just like taken off with that sub form. I mean, he he, he just was posting Masm uh, Microsoft Assembly tutorials left and right, and it's, you know. it's the third cameo of my cat's tail walking across the screen. <laughs> It's like she's just going right by and going. Doo -doo -doo -doo. <laughs> You're not paying enough attention to her. Yeah, obviously, last episode she was passed out. The whole episode she just laid on the the bed over here. This episode she's just dying for attention. So we're actually coming towards uh, our hour. Actually, wow, that actually jumped up ahead. You came on a little late. We might have to bring you on again there uh, for another episode, since you if you could if you can manage your time properly. <laughs> 
I can I can manage my time just fine. I know I'm just messing with you. <laughs> uh, real quick question to you, since we got we we we've already covered Core and his administration and stuff like that. Since you're a current administrator, I just want to ask this one last question: Is that uh, what do you basically uh, do as as an administrator usually? I mean, I know it takes up a pretty good amount of time, right? I just I click around on the different subforms and try and look like I'm active, and then I log back off. <laughs> All right, that works. So we're going to go ahead and wrap this up. We're reaching our hour already. Time just flew by, didn't it? Yep, it just hit 8 o'clock as soon as I looked at my phone. So I want to thank the two guests. Uh, Kaur has been a great help this entire episode. We've covered a lot of his, uh, his personal projects. And he's certainly a, a, a story for those that are, are interested in going after programming and how his story just goes into uh, Dreaming Code, and from there he's just totally branched out and gone gone further than, than a lot of people that I've talked to online. So congratulations on, on all that success, Mr. Delamarski. And our our late guest, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Pencil, <laughs> who, who is a current Dreaming Code administrator, and I guess you could say the uh, Code uh, producer slash sponsor of this show. That's right, and that's why I'm allowed to show up whenever I feel like it. <laughs> yeah, that, that's the way it works. <laughs> hey, thanks for kind of sponsoring this, Jason. I really appreciate it. I think this, yeah. this effort should be led forward. Yeah, the, the podcast did very well. Uh, Mr. Mr. Delamarski actually really made that happen, and I, I listen to it all the time. Uh, so we, uh, we'd like to take that idea behind the podcast and kind of extend upon that into a more video. We're working with, with, with uh, all these technicalities that we're trying to uh, kind of to smooth things out. Uh, eventually we'll have better quality coming across. The sound quality is kind of uh, not the best as it is right now. Hopefully next episode the sound quality will be better. But this is all thanks to uh, Number Two Pencil. He's really helping things out with his, uh, his donations of the, the webcam. And uh, the YouTube channel getting that thing set up, which we'll add in to the uh, all the notes and stuff. We'll make a post on the forums with the link to the video and all that stuff. So thanks a lot, Mr. Uh, Mr. Jason, number two pencil. What, what do you prefer I call you by for this? <laughs> sir. Sir. Okay, thank you, sir, for your, your contributions. <laughs> thank you for, for doing it for putting it on and being the, the face and the beard and the lumberjack of Dream and Code. I was asking what kind of webcam. It's, it's actually uh, a log... Oh, I think I threw away the box. <laughs> it's a Logitech. Uh, it's an HD webcam, so the quality could be a lot better if I actually were able to stream more than uh, 500 kilobytes at a time. <laughs> I have terrible internet, but that's a work in progress. Uh, other than that, thanks a lot. I'm sure everybody appreciated the uh, the show and the work you guys uh, came across and uh, really helped uh, this episode. And hopefully in future episodes, we'll have more guests, uh, that members from the forums, as well as possibly some other uh, me uh, people from outside the forums to give their uh, expertise and their discussions on some uh, posts within the forums themselves. So thanks a lot, guys. I am going to close this chat and close things out for everyone. Thanks. Thank you. Have a good All right. one. All right. Bye, guys. So that pretty much ends this episode. I uh, hope you enjoy it. We've actually recorded this episode, and I'll get the link out to everyone. Like I said, it's youtube.com slash weekly. Actually, is it slash user slash I think it's slash user slash weekly dick. Uh, but we'll get it linked on the forums and everything so everybody can check it out. So I also want to thank, before we leave, is every one of you guys for coming out watching and giving such great support. I've really felt uh, appreciated, and uh, I love all your guys' comments and everything on the, on, the, on the forum. And I felt I owed it to you to just sit here for the last few minutes and just softly stroke my beard in quiet contemplation. All right, thanks everyone for coming out and watching the show. And with that, I'll see you guys in a week, and we'll cover more awesome topics. Later. <laughs>